College Basketball on ESPN. 20 years of great memories. He's a winner. Two-point lead. He's a winner. The loose ball. Somebody sticks that tongue out. He's always got that tongue out. A bona fide blue chip All-American. The tradition continues with a terrific doubleheader on ESPN. First, it's Kentucky hosting Michigan State. Then at nine, Louisville hosts North Carolina. But the night starts off with a final eight rematch as Michigan State takes on Kentucky. The tip from Rob. Next. ESPN's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by Circuit City. Proud to present ESPN Circuit City Bowl Week. Log on to ESPN.com to play the College Bowl Pick'em Sweepstakes. As always, a sold-out Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky. A little free holiday gift for you tonight. The fifth-ranked Michigan State Spartans against the Wildcats of Kentucky. Tom Izzo's Michigan State team, 8-2. and two. His starting lineup, Charlie Bell and Dave Thomas in the backcourt. Granger and Hudson up front with Morris Peterson, who right now is their leading scorer, 6'5", senior, averaging over 16 points a game, but only four in his last outing. So he's cooled off from earlier in the season. But again, Tom Izzo's team, the favorite to win their third straight Big Ten title. The opposition tonight in a tough place to play. Tubby Smith's. Wildcats of Kentucky, Saul Smith and Keith Bogans in the backcourt, McGlure and Allison up front, and Tayshawn Prince now playing power forward against Louisville for the first time, and he is anything but a power forward, but he played a powerful game in that one, 20 points, and he is the leading scorer for Tubby Smith in his third season with an uncharacteristic 5-4 and four season mark so far. Welcome to Lexington, everybody. Brad Nessler and Dick Vitale. Tell you what, though, the last win they got was against Louisville. They beat them by 30, Dick. They play that way tonight. We got a good one. Well, I'll tell you one thing, Brad. They were sensational in the second half. Beat Louisville by 29 in the second half. Defensively, they held them for 3 for 27. They need a big game here. They got to control Charlie Bell and control Morris Peterson. As you said earlier, Peterson's struggling. 9 for 35 in his last three games. Jim Burr tosses it, and Thomas has it for Michigan State. We're underway in Lexington. Charlie Bell packs it down low. Hudson backing in, kicks it outside. Jumper won't go. The rebound off to McGlure. The one thing they do well, Brad, they rebound exceptionally well, Kentucky, other than two games earlier this year where they were out rebounded. So here's Kentucky's first trip into the front court. Saul Smith at the point. Got to make perimeter shots, shooting 27% from the three point line. Looking for McGlure inside. They can't get it to him. Here's Bogans on the drive. Lost it in midair, turnover. Back comes Thomas, the outlet to Bell, and Saul Smith knocked it away. Thomas playing the point guard slot. Kid that was a red shirt last year. And they'll move Charlie Bell over to that point guard. The last three games, Bell has scored better than 20 points a game. That hasn't happened in two or three years at Michigan State. Here's a bump and an offensive foul on Thomas. Good defensive job by Saul Smith. Beat him to the spot, drew the contact. This becomes a big game for Kentucky. You and I were in a locker room talking to Tubby Smith, and we were talking about how important this game is. You're five and four. You get a win here. You got Alaska coming in, which should be a W. You can go up to be seven and four. Now you get a little bit breathing room. That's right. 4-0 at home this year, and they've won 10 straight in this building. And as we said, when we were on Sports Center with Bob, in the last 24 years, they win 90% of the time in here. It's not an easy place to try to come in and win for a road team. McGlore goes down, and the ball out of bounds to Kentucky. Our big man, courtside, Brad Doherty. Bradley. Thank you, Dick and Brad. You talk about the toughest job in college basketball. That position may well, very well go to Tubby Smith at Kentucky. But the toughest job actually belongs to his son, Saul Smith, who has to play for him here at Kentucky. Talked with Tubby earlier today, and we talked about Saul. And he talked about how proud he is of his son, how hard he works, and what a great student he is. I agree with him 100%. Saul Smith's a tremendous young man. Back to you guys. No doubt about it. I talked to Saul in the warm-ups before the game, and I said, boy, you put a lick in on Louisville and he said that's the way we should be playing but we've had a tough schedule and we know we we're going to get better and tonight we feel like we can pick these guys off at home too they were very high before the game and here is Saul Smith no score in the ball game this would be a confidence builder you get a win over a top five team in America this would be a big buildup. McGlure almost threw it away 
quiet in here. Maybe it's a Christmas situation. Everybody's still thinking about shopping. Everybody's out of money, I was going to say. Prince, <laughs> not in this building, I guess. Down to seven on the shot clock. Here's Bogans. Throws one up there, doesn't hit the rim. McLaurin with a hook, and he got it. Come on, McLaurin, on the inside. We're teasing him about having a big game. He says, I always have a big game. <laughs> Nice perimeter passing to get Bell free. Missed a three. Tough rebound off the backside. And now Thomas open from 17. Michigan State still can't wow. find the ball with a rebound. Wow. Might be a lid on those baskets. Here's Tayshaw Prince. Three. Off the backside. And Saul Smith pulled it down. And Thomas has his second foul. He drew the contact. Now got Thomas out of the game. Mike Chappelle will be coming in as you look at Donna. We got a big kiss from Donna before the game. You got a big kiss from Donna. Oh, you didn't get one? I, I got one on the plane oh, today, so I'm oh. not complaining. Oh, I got a big kiss. I still got the lipstick all over my cheek. Yep. She thought about the top of your head, but she thought better. <laughs> Kentucky by Deuce. And we're early. Both teams really out of sync offensively. You don't see good rhythm out there at all. And I really attribute that to the effort we're seeing defensively by both clubs. Now. And the man to man on Saul Smith. They're zoning right now, but Brad just came out of the man. Yes, they Decided did. To go to the zone. Got to do a more ball movement. Prince, nice move on the baseline, but they cut him off. Inside Allison. Did he walk? Yes, he did. He walked. He's a kid that's got to step up. Against Louisville, he did. Against Louisville, he had 16 points, shot 5 for 9. It was a day he looked at his horoscope, and his horoscope that's on right. his birthday said, <laughs> you're going to have a big day, baby. <laughs> and he backed it up. Full court pressure. Playing that small lineup. Well, almost walked with it. Inside, they finally score, and it's Granger. Granger with a good low post move inside. He really reminds me of the kid that plays for Cincinnati, Ryan Fletcher. Both capable of going inside and outside. In the man defense, this can stay very physical. Prince lobs inside of a glore. Too lazy a pass. Kentucky turns it over for the third time. Good defense, good passing lanes. Played by Andre Hudson, big strong physical guy on the interior. Baseline, back outside. Peterson slices and scores. Morris Peterson, MP, they've got to get him going. Peterson. 9 for 35 in his last three games. That'll not get you to be an All-American. He was unbelievable against North Carolina when he had 31 and 5 steals. That's right. Allison inside, comes up short. Loose ball, it'll go to, whoa, Michigan State. And McGlore gets tangled up with Charlie Bell. Probably Bell a street fighter from out of Flint, one of the Flintstones. And let's see. They have a foul. Technical foul on McGlore. I thought they got just tangled up by accident, but apparently Jim Vernon thinks so. You might have said something, but you ready for this? I'll throw a stat at you. McGlore's seventh technical foul in his career. Tommy that's, talked about it with us. That's in the about six too many. Yeah, exactly. Got to just play. Here's another look. Well, yeah. Oh, oh he yeah, tackled absolutely. him. I mean, that's a tackle. You play in the NFL with that baby. You play with the NFL. That's uncalled for. Just got to play basketball, Brian. Yep. Come he addressed that with us in the locker room. He said, Jamal's just got to play. Can't have one of those emotional outbursts. Boy, he had one early, didn't he? Yes, Take he did. Long. No doubt about it. Good call by the officials. I don't even know what caused that. There didn't seem to be a reason at all. As Morris Peterson hits... Both free throws and puts Michigan State up by four. We got a tussle going on in Lexington. Courtesy of a Jamal McGlure technical foul, Michigan State by four. Ironically enough, we just talked to Jamal McGlure about, as a senior, what he has to provide for his team. This was his answer. You, know, you definitely got to do the right things, both on and off the floor, to help the team and encourage them. Um, but I'm also vocal when I'm on the court. Uh, I speak my mind. 
Um, I try to talk on defense and help my players through certain situations. Whoops, he didn't help him through that one, did he? Well, you know, he's got the school record now for technical fouls. That's seven. I mean, that's one record you don't want. I'll tell you, it's, it's really not needed by your veteran player. And Sam Bowie, who we love Sam. Sam gets credit when he does something right. right. Sam made sure he told us. He's sitting he next to us. He didn't teach him that. He said, I didn't teach him that. <laughs> well, that was an uncalled for technical. Oh. As if there's ever a good technical, but uh, that one wasn't. Early in the game, like you said, Brad, why, you know, what, what happened to him? Doesn't make any sense. Unless psychologically trying to be an intimidator, that's not a way you're an intimidator. Gives Michigan State a chance to go up by six when Kentucky had the first basket of the ball game. Zone defense right now by Kentucky. Unless you get a personal foul. Team. Bell on the baseline. Smith got a piece of that, I think, from behind. Here's Bogans in the open court. I tell you, Sal Smith helped him out a little bit. Who screened it? Yes, sir. He read a little screen. Smart, heady play. You talk about basketball IQ to coach his son. He made that happen for Bogan. A little bit of a wide receiver downfield block. Is yes, what that sir. Was. And right. now the Cats fans are in it. And going to that change in defense, going to the zone. Allison at the point of it. I'm going to make Michigan State make some perimeter shots. Chappelle in there now. And he could do that. That's his expertise. Peterson got his man up, kicks it out to Bell from 15, partially blocked. He still got it to drop. Charlie Bell, big time player, one of the most improved players in college basketball. We know that he can defend. We know he can rebound for a guard. And now he's become a scorer. He was a big scorer in high school, but he's improved his scoring on a collegiate level and his ball handling. 8-4, Michigan State, five and a half minutes in. Nice move by Bogans. Not when he got to the basket, but Jamal, Jamal McGlore helps him clean up, and he's going to have a chance to make it a three-point play. Well, see, that's leadership right there, and Donna certainly likes that. Jamal McGlore grabbing the offensive rebound, showing you teams by effort, showing you teams by working hard, and now go to the glass. Number 42, there he is right now. Good offensive rebound. Take the ball up and score. And Chappelle got him down low. Now, here's that block we were talking oh, about. Oh, yeah. He cut right in front of him. He cut right in front of him. Legit. Legit. So McGlure will go to the free throw line. 60% on the season from the stripe. Miss that one. Peterson will clear it. Psychologically, I really believe this is a big game for Kentucky. They can downplay it all they want. At five and four, this becomes a major game on your home floor, playing a top-ranked basketball team. And you can tell that the 23,000 wearing blue in here agree with you. You can just feel it. Everybody's standing. Catching up on Peterson. Ten on the shot clock. They get it in the paint. Bell leads it for Richardson. I'll tell you, Charlie Bell showed his improvement in his ball handling skills last year. He couldn't do that. He created that. He was the 3D man. He drove. He dished the ball to the open man, and he drew them to him. He did an excellent job there in penetration. Four-point lead again by visiting Michigan State. Prince had a moment to look at a three. Dahl Smith has a long three rattle out on him, and Charlie Bell with a rebound. Well, you're right, rattle long, but he's got to know where that three-point line is. Morris Peterson missed one on the other end. Richardson, the freshman, keeps it alive. And now Bell off the glass. Oh, I like Charlie Bell. I'll tell you one thing. He can lace him up for me. Jason Richardson may be one of the best slam dunkers in college basketball. And McGlore and Anaganya are battling down low, and Anaganya picks up. The personal. And a Gagne, big strong inside plays. We look at Orlando Tubby Smith. as the diaper dandy. Look at Anna Gagne. I talk about strength. He's very physical. He's got a body. Look at a body. I mean, he's built like our producer, Jim Belton. He told me to say that. He wrote right. it out for me. He said, Well, everybody know I work out. So the inbound into Blevins, who just checked in for Saul Smith to give him a breather at the point. Jules Kamara also in there. Kamar very active to block shots, run the court. Laura wants it and gets it. He doubled and he has to get it back out to Lowe. Good help defense. Gotta swing the ball. They're holding the ball on for the too long. Defense can adjust to the movement. Allison got his man to commit. A little too strong off the glass. Michigan State will rebound. It's Richards. We have both clubs really go after the ball on a glass. We've got a lot of glass eaters right out here. 
I think Charlie Bell's got that slide and glide and that little cockiness now. Confidence yeah. going on with every bounce. Even more bounce than earlier in the year. You're right. No question. And you know what's bounce? Morris Peterson. Three point pass. Chappelle knocks down a three. That's the scouting report on Chappelle. Came the way of Duke University. Started for Duke when he was there. Transferred all Marco Polo from Southfield, Michigan. Kentucky needing a hoop right now. They by nine. Blow with a hook shot is short. One shot they're getting. That's like clears it out of there. Bell on the run. I like Hudson. He's one of those warriors. Just comes to play. They'll try it again. Richardson this time. And Blevins. Cleans up for this. No numbers to help him out. Tayshawn Prince from deep. Got it. Well, that's an NBA trifecta. They needed that from the kid from California. Compton, California. Tayshawn Prince. Kentucky's 383rd game with a three-pointer. That's the 30% of the year, though, Brad. That's been a nightmare for them, shooting the basketball. Three teams in the country that have hit a three-pointer in every game since that rule was instituted. We'll let you think about that. We'll give you about 30 seconds, then Dick and I'll tell you who they are. Richardson on the drive. Got it back. He's a great athlete. I tell you, I love Jason Richardson's upside. Michigan State missed a couple. Tayshaun Prince ahead. Blevins on the run with Bell. Lays it up, misses, Kamara, got it. Goes Kamara, trailing the play with the conversion. He can run the court, quick, agile. Crowd's getting into it. Oh, they love their caps here, baby. They love their caps. Look at the rebound total. Cut the lead to four. Look at this kid. Cheerleading down the sideline. He'll be a coach. He'll be a coach. You need a basket. you got to quiet the crowd. McGlure. Off of Mrs. Chappelle's. <laughs> Kentucky can cut it to two. One of the great places for college basketball. One of the big time environments. Rupp Arena. Allison on top. Everybody calms momentarily. Kentucky looking for a good trip at the midway point of the first half. McGlure. Gonna work the baseline. He got fouled. Now he's got to convert it. He made the good effort. Now I'm going to go to the line. And now you've got to show leadership. By showing your club, you're going to contribute and convert these. There he's on the baseline. He's going to draw a double up. He's going to rotate over. He spins to the baseline. Draws the contact from out of Canada. Came in with a big time reputation. He was recruited by Rick Patino. Coached by Sidney and Mars. And he's on the staff here at Kentucky. Floor missed two free throws. Got to make those free throws. He made a great decision by coming back to school. There was no way in any shape or form that he was ready for life for the NBA. Just like Nazi Muhammad. I've said this so many times. We talked about it tonight. He comes back to Kentucky last year. They possibly win the national title. His stock goes way up, and now he's drafted in a higher posi position. Now he's struggling for survival in the NBA. Lane violation. Lane violation wipes oh, wow. out what would have been the successful free throw. So no change in the score with 9.53 remaining first half. Michigan State leading, but Kentucky fighting back into it. ESPN family is here. Michigan State by four. It's definitely a family affair when you come to a Kentucky game. Oh, yeah. You Look got at this Saul here. Smith playing the point. Donna's coaching in the upper box. And her hubby, Tubby. Coaching in the bottom box, and if you think that's the end of it, that's not necessarily the end of it because there's other support from the family here as well. Oh, yeah, Gigi. That's there's Gigi. Gigi in the middle just graduated from Georgia. Yeah, and little Gigi. brother Brian, who's 15. And Come on, Brian, get your head up. Get some air time. Yeah, Come on, Brian. That, he's looking at that program. He's reading about his brother. He's reading about his dad. Brian, uh, Tubby told us before the game, his team just won a tournament down in Florida. That's where Donovan was coming back from today. People tell me he's quite a player yep. for his age. Here's some fourth quarter. Now Chappelle's trapped. in trouble. Got yeah. it out to Thomas. Too much Ten time. Seconds. Yes, sir. Nice defense by yeah. Kentucky. Great defensive effort by Kentucky. They really attack the basketball. Oh, but team Cleve, they'd like to have the rock in his hands in that situation. He'll be back. He told you and I came up to here. He said, I will be back about the 30th. Yeah, he's starting to shoot on the side now a little bit. That stress fracture in the foot in late October and the subsequent surgeries kept him out preseason. 
All-American and Big Ten Player of the Year in their preseason prognostications and hasn't been able to play. And Kentucky gives it right back. Here's Chappelle flying in on the wing. Nice play by Mike Chappelle, getting in transition, getting the layup. He usually likes to float and shoot the jump shot, as you see Cleves. I really believe, Brad, after seeing the games I've seen thus far this year, with a healthy Mateen Cleves, Michigan State will be the team to beat for the national title. We've seen him play awfully well without him, and you put him in the mix, and you just wonder how good they might be. Because he's such a clutch player, and yep. he's so tough mentally. Stone in the lineup, so's Tackett. He's got the ball right now. Tackett's got to look for some shots. He can shoot that for a little jump shot. Kamara wheeling back and in and fires to the baseline. Not a good shot. Falling away. Poor angle. Thomas, nice crossover dribble to avoid the turnover. Peterson way out for a three, and he ripped it. They need that out of Mr. Peterson. He had that rolling when they played North Carolina. The lead goes right back to nine, Dick. I just think, when Kentucky had sliced it down where it looked like they'd get it to a deuce. I think Peterson steps up when he plays against the big-time schools. Against Oakland, he's one for six. They don't need any help. Yep. I think the kiss of death was when Digger Phelps said he was the best player in America. Yeah, right. Played That's well right. since then. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Sorry, Dick. <laughs> Tackett wanted to shoot that and mishandled the pass. Now he'll take an odd shot over Thomas. And oh. Thomas loses his footing. Peterson going right back up with it. Oh, yes, he's got the stroke going down, and his mom, Valerie's in the crowd. Bo Pete is doing it. Yes, sir, Bo Pete knocking him down. His mom, Valerie's here. His dad is here. His dad's a principal, used to be a coach, and his mom coaches middle school. Tubby trying to stop this before it erupts too much for Michigan State. They lead by a dozen. Lead now up to 12 with 7.47 left in the half. Reminder, Jeep Alo uh, Oahu Bowl, excuse me, Oregon State and the uh, Rainbows of Hawaii coming up. That one's on Christmas Day, 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific. Beavers first bowl appearance in 65. And what a job those two coaches have done, Dennis Erickson and June Jones. That's coming up ESPN on Christmas night. Jamal McGlure had a good start to the game down low. Brad Doherty, you're seeing Michigan State play a great defensive game against him, though. Yeah, uh, Brad Dick, Michigan State is one of the best defensive teams in the country. They're very aggressive defensively, really get after people, and they're bumping Jamal McGlure off the block quite a bit. For McGlure to get into the basketball game, he needs to take advantage of his aggressiveness and get some of those offensive rebounds and stick them back. Hey, Brad, how do you assess his game for the next level, having been a star there on the NBA level? Yeah, I think he's got a great work ethic. I think there's some things he needs to work on, obviously, as far as footwork and those types of things. Hitting the free throws, stepping up, being a leader on this basketball team. He's got big hands. He's a big guy. He's got a lot of ability. I'd like to see him run up and down the floor just a little bit harder and, and really express himself on the offensive end. And I, I think that would help him once he got to the next level. But he's got a lot of work to do, Dick. It was great watching you and Sam Bowie before the game, baby. Two big guys. <laughs> I mean, unbelievable, Sam and yourself. Uh, Sam's a great player. He gave me fits. He was so tall. I had a tough time shooting over him. And when I played for the Cavs, we played the Nets quite a bit in the playoffs. And Sam and I matched up a, a lot. He was a tremendous player. There's Sam taking a break. So are we. Timeout was 7:27 remaining first half. For savings on Dick, both these teams playing very tough non-conference schedules with us conference schedule coming up the next month. No, you better believe that's not Cupcake City. I no. can tell you that right now. And I think it's really going to help these clubs when they get into their league competition. So many teams just blowing people away out there. We don't know how good they are. Syracuse has not even left home yet. I mean, Jimmy Beheim hasn't right. left Syracuse. Well, the guy that's responsible for that tough Kentucky schedule is with Brad Doherty. Thank you, Brad and Dick. I'm here with CM Newton, athletic director here at Kentucky, who will be re relinquishing those duties here in June. Mr. Newton, you must be very proud of this whole athletic department, what has happened with the football and basketball program. I really am, Brad. What Coach Smith and, and what Hal Mummy have done with our programs makes me very excited. That's wonderful. I have a quick question for you. I understand in 1989, after leaving and coming here, starting the program, there was a chance that you may be the coach that year when you were looking for a coach. But co uh, fortunately, I think Coach Patino stepped yeah. in. Had Rick not taken the job, I would have coached him, but that would have been not as good as he did, I will tell you. Well, congratulations on, on all of what you've done for college basketball over the last 40 years. Thank you, Brad. We're glad to have you guys with us. Thank you. Back to you guys. 
Uh, CM has been great for all the sports here in Kentucky, and we wish him the best uh, down the road. Oh, I tell you, I think he's the best. Uh, you talk about a guy that had a great feel for what the coaches go through. Very, very honest, great deal of integrity. He had one problem, though. He never had any food in that room. Well, you know, but that, he changed that. He sent you dogs. Uh, cookies. You cookies. Chocolate got bars. Chocolate bars. I mean, you got cookies from some other nice lady. Oh, it's eat unbelievable. Your, eat your way I'm going to eat half. my way. I mean, I finally got food here from CM. <laughs> we even um, got a nice note from CM Dick. Yeah, we're going to you and Brad last week and... Uh, or last year, rather, and he said, I uh, heard the comment about no food. So they really lined you up with food today. Before the game. I'll tell you, just a great guy. And I really hope they give a job to Larry Ivey. Larry's worked here so many years as a loyal assistant, and there'd be continuity to what he has started. He's just a beautiful person. We wish him nothing but the best. He and his wife. That's right. And you're right. Larry's been here over 30 years. And he's done a great job with the budgetary side of this program. Foul inside. Shooting the out Prince. You know, Brad, shooting the basketball again, a nightmare for Kentucky. That has been their problem all year long, and it's very difficult to win big-time games if you don't make shots. Last year they had guys like Scott Padgett and Hashimu Evans and guys like that could knock down outside shots. They lost those two, and Wayne Turner, of course, graduation. Michael Bradley and Ryan Hogan, who transferred. So a lot of talent not here anymore. Hey, look at Mateen Cleaves dying to get on the floor. He brings so much to the table because of his toughness, his competitiveness. He said his mom is here. He's here with his former high school coach. Coach Hollywood, they call his high school coach. <laughs> Brad and Dick, the one thing that Kentucky needs to do a little more of is take advantage of the fast break opportunities. They're not shooting the ball very well, so they need to push the ball up, get the easy basket opportunities. That miss by Peterson. He had hit 21 of his last 23 free throws. So it doesn't miss many. And they get the ball back anyway, which is something Kentucky didn't need. It's a 15 point Michigan State lead. I'll tell you, he's part of that split connection also when you talk about Peterson. Michigan State and Kentucky hooked up last year in that real barn burner for the right to go to the Final Four. Tom Izzo's club came on in the second half. Look at right here, shooting the basketball right now. Five for 18. What Brad was talking about is he's trying to get some transition layups. But the bottom line is Kentucky's got to be able to get out in a break, and I don't think that they're going to be allowed to get out by the kind of rebound ability of Michigan State. Trying to trap a little bit on defense now to pick up the intensity on that end of the court and see if they can turn it into offense. Hudson wheels inside. Richardson flying in trying to follow, and Prince comes out of there with it. Now they try to break. Give it up. Give the bounce pass up. Allison, a crossover dribble, and takes it himself. Well, he took it to the basket. That's what Brown was talking about. Get some easy laps in transition. They're going to try to make something happen with their defense as well, especially when they're without a legitimate ball handler. I mean, he's trying to be a makeshift ball handler, Charlie Bell. This club is going to be dynamite. Yep. Get the team right. Richardson's going to get older and better. He's got it right now with 13 on the shot clock. We're under five in the first half. 26 13. Michigan State. Peterson bumped by Allison. See what I like about Peterson. He really steps up in his marquee games. When he saw the jersey of North Carolina, he went to another level. He's heard about Kentucky and its great tradition. He is stepping it up here tonight. Mo Peak. Really stepping it up big time here. Here he is in a one-on-one -on -one confrontation right now. It was the contact, left-handed shooter. So the foul was before the shot. There's the first five games and now he has cooled off, but he's picked up the intensity of this one as Dick said. With 11 points in the first half. Granger on the baseline. He went short. Blevins, nice hustle. And they're going to call a foul before he got that out with pass to Saul Smith on the break. That was great hustle by J.P. Blevins. Watch him go to the deck on this loose ball. We're going to watch the ball go to the deck. Now look at this kid diving, hustling, scrapping. That's what we talk about. Really helping your basketball team. At least trying to make like a running back right there, Saul Smith. Uh -huh. I'm going to go see some football people. Sunday, I'm going to see the Packers get beat by the Tampa Bay Bucks. Ooh, that's as they're going to You're make back. a lot of friends in Green Bay. Oh, with that Warren Sapp is going to come after Brett Favre. Are you kidding my Tampa Bay Bucks? <laughs> they got bucked around a little Ooh. bit by the Raiders. I knew you had to bring that up. 45-zip. Yeah. Uh, Tony Douglas is a good friend of mine. I'll, I'll stick with you on that one. 
Levin's missed a free throw. My partner's really coming out of the sit bed to work this game. We give an A-plus effort. Give him a few extra bucks for being down here. Yeah, if it sounds like Dick's working with somebody new, it's time, folks. I wouldn't let him be in Lexington without me. On the drive, and a Gagne foul inside. And it's going to be on Richardson. So they'll walk it down the other way. And a Gagne can't believe it. He said, what did I do? A weekly event that counts down the top 50 North American athletes of the past century as we unveil the top four. Number four, number three on Christmas Eve at 10. And then number two and number one will be announced on ABC the day after Christmas at 5 o'clock, 2 o'clock Pacific. And who's left? The top four alphabetically, Muhammad Ali, Jim Brown, Michael Jordan, and Babe Ruth. Well, I would go with Muhammad, I'd go with Muhammad Ali number one right there, alphabetical and or any other way. He transcends so much love. Or numerical, any way you want it. This time is will do some coaching on that sideline. Glor, after missing his first two free throws and having a third one wiped out by a lane violation, rips two this trip down. They got to convert free throws, and they got to lock it up defensively. They need a little run here to get some momentum going in at halftime. They'd like to get it down to single digits by halftime, I would think. Yeah, they got to get some momentum. Good defensive effort right there by Saul Smith. No one rotated out on the wings. They lead it for Richardson, and he lost it to Bledick. Now fill the lanes. Guy's got to get out of the lane. As soon as that turnover comes, you got to fill up that lane. They used to fill it with Mercer and Walker and Derek Anderson. Oh, you're not kidding. Wow. Glor trying to face the basket. Has to kick it back out to Blevins. Trying to make something happen. Saul Smith loses it. Watch this guy explode if he gets his hands on it. Oh, he lost it right huh? back. He made a dunk against Arizona, but Team Cleve said it should be nominated for an ESPY, a reverse jam that was incredible. Kentucky still trailing by 11 with 3.42 to go in the half. Michigan State is led by as many as 15. Kentucky's cut it back to 11, but they don't have some of those guys Dick and I were talking about of past years, the Tony Delks, wow. who could penetrate and hit from the outside. Guys like Ron Mercer flying in off the wing. Or maybe a Jeff Shepard with some penetration. And maybe a Scott Padgett who could take it outside and knock down the three. All of those guys are somewhere else or have had their jerseys retired, no matter how you look at it. It's not the same kind of Kentucky team as some of those players. Jamal Mashburn, a couple of years of leading scorer. Delk, three years. Then Mercer, Shepard, and Padgett. And now Tayshawn Prince is their leading scorer at 14 a game. And he's been held at just one three-pointer in the first half. And we don't even see names up there like Antoine Walker and right. Derek Anderson. As you look at right now, Kentucky offensive rolls, field goal percentage, three points, just not shooting the basketball, especially in their four losses. In their four losses, their three-point totals have been horrendous. And that's what's really crushed them. They're 20 for 80 in their four, four losses from the three-point line. They went seven out of 14 from Louisville. Here goes a three. Yes, there goes a three. Yeah, he can do that. He has that kind of ability. Got to look to shoot it. Make like a Cameron Mills. Well, that's seven straight points for Kentucky. They're battling back, though. And knocked away by Blevins. To the way. Bogans. Bogans hangs and is fouled, but he's going to get a chance to get a couple from the line. Brad, I don't understand why guys don't fill the lane to get ahead of the basketball. One of the first things you teach in transition, once the ball is in the guy's hands, he's going to have people that are going to fill the lane with him. See, right here, he's going to be able to get people out in front of him. They're trailing the blood. Nobody's getting out. Now, see, he has nothing right here. He has nothing. He's got to bring that ball back out. He's lucky he created a foul opportunity. But you're right. He didn't have much to go to. He got down there, and there was really nobody to pass it to, at least not on our screen. Yeah, they're very passive. And from the free throw line, Hogan's now with three. And Kentucky can make this a six-point game. We said they wanted to get it to single digits by halftime. They keep playing like this. They might tie it up by halftime. Yeah, Michigan State went into a little lull. Yep. Michigan State had scored eight straight. Hey, Brad, you notice how they don't get out in transition, Brad Doherty? They don't really get ahead of the basketball to fill the lane. I've noticed that, Dick, that's interesting because that's one of the fundamental principles of basketball when you're in transition. Having two guys out in the alleys and the big guy running down the middle of the lane, creating pressure. Kentucky doesn't do that very well right now. They're back in this game, though, baby, and the crowd is back. Oh, yes, the Rook Fanatics are back. 
And they almost stole another one. Oh, I got the ball. I ain't giving it up. I got the rock. I'm not giving it up. You better give it. it. Better give it to the official. <laughs> They're hustling. I've got to, you've got to give them that. They always seem to have the effort. They have the energy. It's just a matter of making shots, baby. Making shots. And if you defend a rebound, you always have a chance to win. Here's Peterson outside. Missed a shot. Bogans had a hand on it, but it was knocked away. And it's going to be Michigan State ball. Coming up, Fort Yard by Mary on halftime report. Highlights of UNC Wilmington against eighth-ranked Florida. Action for number 12, Twitter, uh, Tennessee. This foul is going to be along at halftime. Tennessee on a roll off of their best start in many years. They got a tough game though with Tulsa. That's going to be a tough battle. Tennessee, Vincent Yarbrough has really stepped up the Super South. Oh, this is Travers from the outside. 20 on the shot clock, 220 on the game clock. Well, they keep scrapping for it. They just can't come up with a loose ball. They're really hustling, though. We've got to give them credit for they got to give them an A for hustling, baby. They are really hustling and scrapping. Michigan State in a drop. Kentucky scored nine in a row. Levin's almost had another steal. And now he does. Kick it out. Oh, bad pass. Bad pass. Buried it just a little too much. And now Chappelle glides on the baseline, and McGlure takes down the rebound. And a foul on Chappelle. Mars Peterson had an open shot, tried to make the extra pass. Your All-Americans got to step up and make a big play when your team is struggling. They gave this club life. They had this club ready to knock out and put away, Brad. But they got him back here with lots of life. Michigan State. Five turnovers. Kentucky was seven. And now McGlure, who's hit his last two free throws, six points for the senior. Rips another one. Nice stroke right there. Nice follow through. Yep. Charlie Bell sitting on that sideline. Bell's out because he's got three personals. Yes, sir. And that third one was big. There's the stroke. They really missed Charlie Bell. It's a four-point game. And they're playing really, in essence, without their backcourt. Bell and Cleves. That's right. All the way down, and Bogans picks up the foul. Hey, one thing about Bogans, really hustles. Look at Charlie Bell out of Flint, Michigan. He's got the Allen Iverson look. Bogans, his first team six. So Bogans picks up his first, and it's only the 16th foul, so they'll inbound on the baseline. I mean, you think about Kentucky, you think about all the thoroughbreds that have played here. We need to die to my right, Sam. Bowie, Bowie. Peterson spins in the lane. Kamara adjusted his shot, but pushed it. And that would have been a three-point play, but he didn't drop. Foul on Kamara is his second. You know, Mars Peterson went out to make that big play down that lane. I talked about the thoroughbred, Sam Bowie and company, and all the great ones that played here. I saw some great thoroughbreds, and I wish you would have been there with me today. I was hugging and petting Silver Charm. I heard Seattle Slough tried to bite you. Yeah, Seattle Slough. He yeah. got a little frisky. Yeah, well, I was hugging him. He's been frisky about 25 years, I think, wow. in the past year out there, hasn't he? Oh, beautiful animals out there. Just beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. They have three chimneys for him. Bob Clay and company. They Gave us an escort. They told me to bring you there next time. Oh, it's just I'll beautiful. Be there. Genuine risk was there. Those horses watch the games. They know who you are. <laughs> They've got their own TVs in the stalls. But Peterson got them both. They needed that. They needed that right there. Just to kind of quiet the crowd a little bit. Yes, Brandon sir. Smith checks in. What's going to be big in this game is Charlie Bell. If he gets his fourth foul early, that can create a major dilemma for Tom Izzo. What a job Izzo's done on that sideline. Last year, Final Four. You look at Bell sitting on the sideline. Bless you, Charlie. God bless you. <laughs> First meeting at Rupp Arena. The last time Michigan State won here. 71. 71 was eight off Rupp's final. Kentucky team. Gus Kanakis was the coach. He's down the other end now. He's radio. That's right. Blevins inside. McGlure. Nice rebound. Yes, sir. That's a big time rebound right there. He was aggressive. He wanted it. His Kentucky fans want it. They don't want five and five. They don't want mediocrity. They don't think mediocrity here. Time out. With 121 to go in the half.
Watch McClure get into the offensive rebounding lane. He steps right into the lane, grabs it with those long arms, and knows how to convert on the interior. Seventh rebound for McClure, and then the stick back to give him 10 points in the first half. The last time these two teams met, though, was in the Midwest Regional in St. Louis. And Morris Peterson with a great baseline move. McGlore slams, much like his last shot, Mateen Cleese from the outside. And Michigan State went to the Final Four. Morris Peterson came off the bench in that game for 19 points and 10 rebounds. And in the last seven minutes, he was a dominant player. And then he made 6-6 six six on a free throw line in the last 29 seconds of the game. Michigan State then lost to Duke. 68-62 in the next outing. Yes, and a foul up. on Prince. Setting up that big matchup with Connecticut and Duke as Prince gets the foul. Tubby Smith can't believe it. The crowd obviously didn't like it. Here's another look. I did not see the push apparently came before. And yeah, we can't see it. We're blocked out by the cameraman right here to my right and you can't see it on the replay. It looked like it was a little touchy, but Rage will go to the free throw line nonetheless. And Granger, who had been shooting 86% from the line, misses. Oh, a lot of contact there. Cats get it back anyway. Chance to make it a two-point game. And Prince is fouled. I tell you, a lot of contact going on on that floor. A lot of contact. Both clubs physical, both clubs scrapping. Tom Izzo says, why does life have to be so tough? We still didn't see the foul. At any rate, Tayshawn Prince gets some poetic justice, I'm sure, in his mind as he goes to the free throw line on the other end. It didn't look like a down. foul. Didn't look like a foul at all in the previous possession. Tayshawn, who played so well against Louisville, as Prince played like it was 1999. Oh, what a second half they had. Oh, what a second half they had. It's going like it's 1999. <laughs> <laughs> I was afraid you missed that. Oh, no, I didn't miss it. Two-point game. Oh, yes. Look at the team leave. He's coaching his heart out up there. They wish they had him on the floor. He's got the towel around his neck. He's making like John Thompson. A game when Michigan State led 26 to 11. It's now 28 26. 26 11 looked like it was going to be all over, but they kept scrapping defensively. Almost had a five-second count. And Blevins kicked it away, so a fresh 35, and we work under 57 seconds in the half. There he is. Look, he's trying to make like John Thompson. He's got the towel around his neck. Oh. 15 to 2 Kentucky run right now. Tell you what, they get another steal or a defensive stop and get a basket. This place is going to go nuts. But somebody's got to cut him off. So Smith did. With the charge, wave it off. Tubby said, I like it. That's my son. That's my son. Give me a Christmas present, son. All I want is a W. That's all I want. Donna says, give us a W. That's the gift we want. Donna says, we paid for braces. Don't knock his teeth out. Yeah, look at Saul. Oh, yes, he rotated over. Look, Lee. Lee says, I don't know about that. Chance for Kentucky to tie. Marvin Stone looked so impressive early this year, not getting the minutes he had earlier. Smith tried to feed the lane, and Granger knocked it away. Saul has a tendency to leave his feet on the draw. Peterson did he get away with a oh, nice pass. And a foul underneath. And it's going to go on Hudson. Great job by Peterson finding the open man. Jamal McGlure hugs his guy, Saul. Saul, keep hustling and scrapping. Don't worry about that turnover. Michigan State, Dick, has had a field goal in six and a half minutes. Yeah, they really went a schneid. When Charlie Bell went out, they became a different Saul basketball Smith. team. Yep. Saul Smith, who hustled back after throwing that pass away, got a chance to tie this basketball game. He knocked out five threes against Maryland. They got beat, but he kept them in the game. Rips the first one. 
He's their leading free throw shooter. He's 15 of 17 of the year. I tell you, there's not another player in America that gets scrutinized and evaluated with every pass and every stat like this young guy does on all the talk shows. That's what Brad Doherty said early in the game. That maybe is the toughest spot in college basketball right there. The kid you're looking at, not his dad. Well, you know, it even brought together a lot of the African-American activists who had a meeting yesterday with uh, C.M. Newman, and they really had a meeting concerned about the fact that on the talk shows putting so much heat on Tubby, and they wanted assurance that he was okay. Wow. And when they left, they had the assurance. C.M. said, we love Tubby here. Absolutely. Let him coach and let him play. Exactly. Here's the hustling defense again. States leads down to one. They're going to play for the last shot. Peterson. Offense. Oh. Charge taken by Smith again. I'll tell you, those are the little things the kid does on the floor that are never measured in the stat sheet. There he is, taking a charge, helping your team. Taking another charge right here. Watch Saul Smith. He squares his body. He said, I'm doing that for Kentucky, but my dad as well. The kid's taking a couple of the chops for the team. Kentucky can lead at halftime if they score. Blevins for the lead. They got they got momentum, though, Brad. They got yes, momentum they going in that locker room. And it's a one-point game at halftime, courtesy of a 16-2 run to end the half. Halftime, fifth-ranked Michigan State on the road, leading Kentucky 28-27. to Let's check in with Brad Doherty and Tom Izzo. Coach Izzo, your team got off to an early lead. Charlie Bell picks up his third foul. Kentucky works their way back into the basketball game. What do you ask of your kids second half? Well, they did a good job working their way back in, and we lost our composure. You know, we had so many guys in foul trouble, but we had no guards left. And because of no guards, we get Charlie Bell of the game, Brad. We were a little, we looked disoriented there in that stretch. Okay, good, good, good luck, Coach. <laughs> One point halftime lead for Michigan State, 28-27. At intermission, Chris Fowler coming up at halftime. All right, Brad, thank you. So kind of a reversal of the meeting last March in the regional final when Michigan State fell down 17-4, had to claw back, eventually won the game. Kentucky from 15 down at one point in that first half. Down only one at the break. Huh? And exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by Ford Outfitters, No Boundaries. And by Maglite, the perfect gift to brighten the holidays. Maglite. A one-point halftime lead for Michigan State, but certainly they had things well in hand earlier in this ballgame. They lead 28-27 at the break at Rupp Arena in Lexington, but thanks to Horace Peterson and company, they jumped out to a big lead. Peterson had a couple of threes, 13 points to lead his team in scoring, but Saul Smith took a charge that kind of turned the game. But Team Cleves didn't like it. Tommy Smith obviously did, and then he came down and took another charge. It helped Kentucky to a 16-2 run. Mom liked it, obviously, so did the Kentucky fans, and all of a sudden the Wildcats, Dick, get back in this game. They were dead in the water at 26 to 11. We looked at each other and said, oh, brother, <laughs> that's a one-point ball game. Well, they did it because of their defense. They really did step up. And Sal Smith taking those charge helped big time. The bottom line is they're shooting horrendously. Eight for 23. Yet they're one point yeah. down with a chance to beat the top five team in America. They changed drastically Michigan State when, when they Charlie lost Bell Charles Bell. That's right. Bell goes out with the third foul. They had no backcourt play. They were totally disorganized. There's our Zales. First half stats, Kentucky is Dick said only 35%, but the rebounds, they've kept in it by staying with Michigan State on the boards and also taking those charges and things like that. The little things that don't show up has helped Kentucky get back in the ball game. Made some free throws as well, but Blur made some free throws down the stretch. He had a pretty big half statistically when you look at only scoring. Look at that first 13 and a half minutes in the last wow. six and a half minutes. Something yeah. else, huh? Yeah, the difference, like we said, Charlie Bell on that sideline. Now he's got a question mark. What do you do with Charlie Bell? Do you start him? I think you got to start him. You can't wait and say, well, let Kentucky now. Let's see if they come back, take the lead, and then put him in. I think you got to start him, try to get some momentum. And if they do start Charlie Bell, does Saul Smith or Bogans or somebody try to take it to the paint and see if they can pick up a fourth foul on him? Let's check in with Brad Doherty. Brad and Dick, Tubby was really pleased. Coach Tubby Smith was really pleased with the way his team attacked Michigan State when Bell was out of the basketball game. He wants it to continue to apply the pressure, keep the pressure on, create turnovers, give yourself opportunities to score in that transition that Dick and I talked about. Back to you guys. 
Michigan State eight and one this year when leading at the half, but they have a precarious one point lead and it may disappear on this opening trip for Kentucky to start the second half. Yeah, Charlie Bell right here with Sal Smith. I would attack. I try to drive. I would pick up my dribble. I would attack the basket on him. They're switching a lot. Now he switched. He's got Allison inside. Hogan's lost the handle, but didn't lose possession. He plays a guy that goes to the inside. I'll post him up. Allison walked with him. See, right now, what Charlie Bell is doing is switching on every pass and every move. And whoever is big that he switches to, like Prince, he should rotate inside and try to post them up. Now some full court heat again from Kentucky. This helped them in the later stages of that first half. Michigan State now has gone over seven minutes without a field goal. Oops. Back court. Yes, sir. Back court. His body was over. And then he went back. A That's little, a no-no. Little dance step. We'll see it again. Try to do a little disco. He tried to get ready for his Christmas dance. Oops. Look at this. Uh-oh. As soon as he touches there, turnover city. Kentucky again a chance to lead. Their only lead was a two to nothing to start the ball game. The smart move by Bogan to try to take him to the basket. Allison for the lead. Air ball. Not even close. Not even close. And now Thomas will bring it into the front court for the Spartans. Thomas gives him a lot of size out on the perimeter. He's not a true guard. That's a tough adjustment to make from the wing to play the point. That's nice hustled by Bogans playing for the steal. They knocked it out of bounds. Nice job by Jimmy Burr. Fishing on that sideline. <laughs> the team believes if they ever needed him right now I think they could use him his dad came over and said to us hey talk about his dads too not just the moms <laughs> Ranger's got to look for that perimeter jumper he can shoot that jumper set a screen for Granger there's the shot they got it by Granger good call well he's not looking he can shoot the basketball Granger's got that kind of range Teams have tendencies, and if you see them play enough, you can sort of figure some tendencies. Bogus. Not a good choice, probably, but McGlure with his ninth rebound is fouled. Well, see, Bogan stopped and hesitated. He should have went right to the basket. He had Bell checking him, and he hesitated in the lane. Celebrate Christmas Day with college football. The Sun Devils of Arizona State, led by J.R. Redmond, take on the Diva Deacons of Wake Forest. Jeep Aloha Bowl live on ABC, 3.30 on uh, Christmas Day. Tim Brandt, Dean Blevins, to bring you that one. Hey, I'll tell you one thing, J.R. Redmond's a heck of a back. I saw him against Notre Dame. He can really run. Yes, he is. He is. High NFL draft choice. Three-point lead here for the Spartans. See now again, Charlie Bell's playing a guy inside, almost had his fourth right there. And they're going to call it a jump ball. Ooh, he got away with it. I don't know why he was that aggressive. He almost got his fourth. Look at George Felton sitting next to Tubby Smith. George, head coaching experience in South Carolina. Now look at number 14, Bell. See, Bell's going to challenge him right here. I mean, you got to be a little bit more, a little bit more careful. Thomas there. on the break, nobody got back. Yeah, poor job in defensive transition, and Mr. Thomas takes advantage of it from out of Canada. All of a sudden, it's a five-point lead again. This is what we've been talking about with Kentucky, a lack of a go-to guy. Now, who is your option here? When you're a little bit in trouble, you've got to have a player that you can go to that can make that big play. I think Prince has got to be their first option. Well, there he is to touch it. He has not taken many shots. He's right. And coming off a great game against Lillard, and he can't seem to get it to him in open space. Got to set some screens. They're not getting to, doing a good job with spacing and screening. That's a scream on McGlure. And yeah, back to McGlure. And oh, not a Peterson, he'll take it over Smith. Got it. Under control, really under control in the way. Had a lot of injuries early in his career. Seven point lead now. Here's McGlore in close. Wave it off. Offensive foul. One of the better drives by McGlure, but they call it off with the weak side help coming over rotating. Look at the eyes. Look at the eyes right here. Take a look at those eyes. Take a look at his eyes, the focus, under control, and he knows he's got a smaller guy, so he pulls up and shoots the little J right over Saul Smith. So six straight points to open this half for the Spartans, and they open up the lead again. 
They're a different club with this guy on the floor. There's a lot more confidence in the team with him on the perimeter, Charlie Bell. Last three games, he scored 20 points or better. Nice pass down to the low post to Granger. Back out to Peterson. They work it around with 10 on the shot clock. Bell has a look. Got a pick. He's going to try to take it himself. They wave it off. He walks with it. So Michigan State with a lead. Oh, get some air time. See the guy with the S on his hat? Yes, sir. That's Cleves' dad, Mr. Cleves. He's sitting with Mr. Chappelle and also Mr. Peterson. Yep. Yes. Peter. All there together. It's right great. behind the Spartan bench. It's great to see the dads come out and give support to the kids. Three-pointer goes by Saul Smith. The boy Kentucky needed that one. He's capable. He's capable. His dad is always on the sideline. He's dad a great role model for young people. Huge shot by Saul Smith. His first field goal of the game. Could have come at a better time. Those threes give you momentum. Good ball reversal. Hudson cut off by Prince. Here's Peterson up high with a shot. Didn't get the roll, but a nice follow on the baseline by Thomas. See, Thomas right there gives you an extra dimension as a guard. 6'7 gives you another rebound. They got rebounded guards when you put them on Bell and Thomas. Yep. Nice pass in low. And it's Prince. Yes, sir. Tayshawn Prince shows his versatility. We know he can step out and shoot the three. He goes down inside. All these coaches, mailbox mashing time. One will have a beautiful Christmas, and the other will be sitting under the tree. Very, very sad. Believe me, I was there. Ranger got oh, yes. the outside jumper. He can shoot it. He's got to get more shots. He can flat out shoot the basketball. When he scores in double figures, they win, and he has nine right now. Wow. Excuse me, he's got seven. And when he scores in double figures, they never lose. Nice play. McGlure, a finger roll. He was trying to avoid a traveling call. And now there's going to be a foul on Hudson inside. Yeah, he was worried about the defensive help rotating over. He didn't take the most. Coach Sutton doing a little coaching right now with Coach Smith. Say, we got to run this cup and that cup. We got a timeout. The Wildcats hoping they can come up with a gift in this game. But they trail by seven. 15 13 to go. All he wanted for Christmas was to say hi to Dickie oh. V, and he got his chance on national TV <laughs> two days early. All How right, you guys? Doing? Dick's five days wow. to Christmas. You want to sing this? Oh, you sing it. You the got better voice than Christmas. me. Dick wanted John Calipari, a new starting five. Get a job, Johnny C. Bobby Knight, a final four in Indy. Could happen, Brad. Tommy Smith, a gifted three-point oh, shooter. Oh, does he need one badly? John Chaney to get to the Hall of Fame. Oh, he belongs to the Hall of Fame. And Mateen Cleaves back and healthy. Oh, wow, you're How's singing that? with that sore voice. I can't believe it with that sore throat. You're singing. Yeah, I shouldn't be. Incredible, wow. you got to do the rest of the game by yourself. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, baby. No, I need you right here. I am not a broadcaster. I'm a jock from the locker room. <laughs> and I'm here as you look at Mr. Cleef. The last game I ever coached was on this floor in college. Is that right? Got beat by Michigan with Ricky Green, Phil Hubbard, and Johnny Orr in an unbelievable battle when I had Terry Tyler and John Logan and Terry me. I mean, it was unbelievable. Hey, by the way, in Detroit, there's a guy I got to say a salute to. Joe Falls, a journalist and columnist, is going to be inducted into the Michigan Hall of Fame. And it should have happened years ago. Congratulations, Joe. You deserve it. Mr. Detroit, he's been a steady guy in that city. Mr. Consistency. Five minutes into the second half, a seven-point game. Tomorrow out on top. And a bump and a foul in the lane. And Agagne, I think, is going to be the guilty party again. And Agagne said he's acting. He's acting. He's pulling an Ashley Judd. He's pulling an Ashley Judd. He's an actor. I mean, are you kidding me right now? He said, there's nothing I'm doing. Watch him fall. He's going to fall. Oh, oh, oh. Well, Look at him go to the deck. <laughs> he looked more like Vern Gagne on that yeah. one. All you wrestling fans from 100 years ago. Oh, you know that wrestling. Antonio Rocha. <laughs> Gene Stanley. <laughs> Mr. American. Kentucky with a fresh shot clock. Charles Smith thought about a three. Sasha looked for the three. He could shoot it on a perimeter. Open some things up. Think about the three. Under 15 on the shot clock. This Odin right there. Whoops. That one got away from him. Michigan State went to the zone. It forced the turnover. Number 23, Richardson. Oh. 
Cole makes the bad pass and his dad's eyes just get wider and wider. His mom, she wants a beautiful Christmas and she knows the house of the illusion. What joyous little would you? Well, this 43,000 in the house tonight would agree. Well, they got quite. See, Lincoln, Michigan State did come out of halftime. Got it's the little six lead. Great points, yeah. Yes, sir. And quite a crowd there. Peterson has to kick it back out through it away. That's got by Bogans to step in the passing lane. Neither club really executing no. offensively. I mean, it really is sloppy offensive basketball. And that's what the game looks like when you don't make shots. When there's a flow and shots are falling like the Indiana Carolina game, it makes the game so much better. Granger and Kamara get tangled up. Kamara will pick up the foul. That'll be his third. You know, coming up next, you got Carolina and Louisville. That indeed we do. As the seventh ranked Tar Heels will be at Freedom Hall to take on the Louisville Cardinals at nine following our game. That's a game of urgency for both those clubs. You bet. They have to really step up. Carolina coming off that loss as you look at the winning this programs. I'm going to tell you why later. I'm going to pick my best team of the century in college basketball. I'm going to tell you why I picked them. And it's not just about winning national championships. I saw Indiana, I'm going to tell you, they're a lot better. Bobby Knight's got that club playing yeah, so well. Yeah, that's great right there. A.J. Guyton played like an All-American. He had 31 the other day, and Michigan State threw it away. That's sloppy. Just absolutely sloppy basketball. For this time of the year, these clubs should be a little sharper. I think they're a little fatigued, a little tired, and maybe they need a little break for the holiday. Don't we all? Yes, we do. 39-32, <laughs> it remains. They need a basket here. They really do. It's a big possession. Prince will try to get it for him. Yes, yes sir. Tayshawn Prince, again, go-to guy. Step up. Make the big play. Win that, win that honor of being your go-to guy. The players can be confident to get you to rob. Levin's all over Bell now. Trying to pick up the defensive effort. That three-pointer by Prince is made it a four-point game. So I would attack Charlie Bell now. He picked up his dribble. Got to step up in the passing lanes. Richardson, the freshman, working on Saul Smith. He lost the ball. Yes, sir, Jimmy Bowe with the ball. He didn't lose it. Kentucky's got it back. Tayshaun Prince now. We're going to see. We're going to watch the jump shot as he steps out. Now watch this as he steps out to the top of the circle. Freeze it right here. See this? He's stepping out, reverse the ball, gets here, squares his body. He's going to knock that baby down. Granger didn't have enough time to recover. He got too deep in the lane yes, when Prince backed out of there. Helping recover so important in defensive systems. McGlore asking for it down low. Ball deflected out of bounds. Spacing. Spacing just not there. When I watched Indiana the other night, Brad, little simple things. 15 to 17 feet apart from each other. Excellent spacing and reversing the basketball. Right now, when you look at Kentucky's offense, the players are a little too tight, too close together. You can give help on them. Prince got his man in the air. Then he's short on the jumble, but he got the ball back. McGlore wheels, deals, and got it. Got the little jump shot in the lane. Jamal McGlore. It's back to a deuce. They're not going away. They never go away in this building. Yes, sir. You're right. 90% that they win. And look at the crowd. Oh, this crowd. Oh, this crowd. Do they want the W? Oh, do they want the W? Tom Izzo wants to talk about it. Tom Izzo has played a suicide schedule. He'd have better off trading a couple of those teams to play the Detroit Pistons. As McLaurin, he said, look what I found. Look what I found. All I want is a jumper to fall in. Peterson oh. tried to slap it away, and he just turned from the line. Got to Jay. Knocked it down. Big shot by Jamal McLaurin. 12 points for him. And you know what? He really hasn't made a mistake since that stupid technical foul he got in the first three minutes of the game. And that was stupid, no question about it. Hey, do all your Christmas shopping? Not quite done. I got mine all done. I'm all done. I'll tell you that. You know. We don't have a chance to work together till after the holidays. So to you and Lorraine and the girls, uh, Merry Christmas, Dick. Same to Nancy and Reese. I saw the beautiful card you sent with Reese on that machine of yours. Wow. 
crowd really helping. You talk about the emotion of a crowd being a factor. These Kentucky fans are a major factor. Peterson trying to go to work. Got a pretty good shot. And Agagne with a rebound and a chance. And Agagne, boy, big time offensive rebound right there from the Boris High School. I like it. There's something tough about that kid. Very physical. They got some great recruits coming in next year. Marcus Taylor. Where will he put a uniform on the Michigan State? Zach Randolph from Indiana Mary. Nice entry pass to McGlure. And he's going to have to earn it from the free throw line as Davis, uh, Thomas, rather. You got to finalize. You got to be able to convert that. You got to finalize this. Now look at that again. Now this is a big time offensive rebound. Look at his big physical force. He's a diaper dandy. Jamal McGlure hesitated a little bit when he went to the basket. He's got to go to the basket with authority. Got a chance to talk to Hashimo Evans is here. He's in France. Just came here from France where he's playing. Hashimo came over at halftime and just looked down at me and smiled and said, Cats are going to win it. That's all he said to me and he kept on walking. Oh, There's there Hashimo. Come out of New York City, transferred from Manhattan. Now, an exciting, exciting player at times. Had his stretches where he was nearly unstoppable. Had some stretches he just as soon forget, but overall a heck of a player. Well, he was responsible for helping him win that national championship. Some foul trouble for Michigan State. And their lead has been cut to two. Michigan State by two with 11.42 to play. We've been talking about everybody's Christmas wishes and whether Kentucky was obviously wishing for a victory tonight. But we actually talked to Tubby Smith about what he'd like for Christmas. <laughs> My Christmas wish is that, that there be peace all over the world, that, that, that we can bridge the gap between those that have and have not, between the good and the bad, the ones between... Uh, between black and white, that there be uh, love uh, throughout this, this nation. Well, pretty well said, I'd say. Great family man, I'll tell you one thing. He's a tremendous role model. As you look at his son, Gigi, on the left, and on Brian the right of the, the right. screen, Brian, a young 15-year-old who plays here in Lexington, is an outstanding athlete, and solid. They're all good students, mom and dad. It's great when you see a family together, and that's what he's about. It's not just about winning basketball games, it's about winning in life. And that's what Tubby Smith is about. A beautiful person. Of course, he's been able to win on the court, too. It's all also good. Georgia and here, including a national championship. Peterson didn't get called for a travel, kept his foot planted. Thomas outside. Peterson keeps it alive. Wide open Chappelle. You can't leave him out there. He can shoot it. We know that's his expertise. Not down the jump shot. Just inside the three-point line, so that was a two-pointer for Chappelle. Well, the All-American made that play. Morris Peterson with yep. the offensive rebound. A good effort. McGlure down low, doesn't get a chance to see it. Prince does. I'll tell you, Tayshaun, if he's knocking down the three, they become an effective basketball team. It's down to one, as it was at halftime. Hey, Brad, you want to talk about McGlure? What do you think about McGlure now? I think McGlure has done a great job, Dick and Brad. He's stepping into the lane aggressively. He's played very smart basketball since the technical foul, and he's asserted himself. He's becoming more aggressive as the game goes on, and he's the reason that Kentucky's within one point in this ballgame. With 10.42 to play. Well, you know, he's always biased to the big guys anyway. Uh -huh. I mean, always biased to the big guys. <laughs> I mean, all those 6'11 guys, they live in another world. They live together. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's right. You play with your back to the basket, Dick. It's hard. They definitely live at a different altitude. Here's Peterson. Oh, oh yeah. What a shot around there. That's, that's, that's a big-time shot. That's a big-time shot, Mr. Doherty. 18 points for Peterson. Here's Blevins on the other end. Oh, how the game gets so much better when it's nothing but nylon. When you tickle the twine, it brings up everybody. Everybody gets excited. Blevins is all over the place. He'll lead the club in floor burns tonight. He had a huge three. His second of the night. These cats don't want to go away tonight, Mr. Rizzo. Chappelle for three. Got it. Oh, he's on fire now. Then he starts talking some junk. Knocks down that three. Just play, Michael. Just play. Midway point of the second half. Brad Nessler, Dick Vitale, Brad Dorley, and Michigan State leading by four. 
Those threes change the complexion Boy, so quickly. Do they ever? Sean Prince had a notion. Granger got there just in time. He should have another notion. They should set some screens for him. He's feeling it. And a foul. Going to go on Chappelle. That's third on uh, Chappelle. So Michigan State's got a bunch of guys oh, yeah. in that three and four foul category for Tom Izzo. Andre Hudson out with four. Charlie Bell's been playing with three. I like this guy. Ranger, I don't think he shoots enough. I think he's too unselfish. Bogans will inbound. Out to Prince. They wisely got on him in a hurry. He might have lofted one right there. Smith, Bogans, Blevins, Prince, and McGore on the floor. In Kentucky. Trailing by four. In that zone defense, trying to hide guys who are in foul trouble. Thomas got a piece of it. Now Prince trying to go to the floor. Peterson gets it. Missed it. If they would have made that, I would have given five. If you'd have made that shot, you'd talk about the degree of difficulty. Wow. Smith packs it inside of McGlore with a hook. Got his own rebound. Jamal McGlore missed the second try. He's got to be able to finish a little bit more inside. Their spacing getting a little bit better now, Kentucky offensively, though. McGlore, another double-double, though, tonight. 14 points, 10 rebounds already. Yeah, good effort after we said that silly technical early in the game. Got a school record in that area, and I think that's one record he'd rather not have. Yeah, you're right. And a bump on Bogans down in the low block against Peterson. Bell's on Bogans. That's his second. That's two on Bogans. I tell you, I feel sorry for Wright State. They're going to feel the wrath of Michigan State huh. because that's the game that Mateen Cleaves is going to come back in. And all of a sudden, Wright State say, why us? Yeah, that's right. Why us? Why don't they save him for the Big Ten? Chappelle to inbound. We're under nine minutes. Michigan State has led virtually the entire game. In fact, Kentucky's only lead was at two to nothing. Tony Bell really playing on the poise. Tony Thomas wide open. Out. Missed an open shot. Oh, what a rebound. Off the back side. He double, he double dribbled. dribbled. Yes, yes he, he did. did. He double dribbled. Put it on the floor and turned and did it again. Big time offensive rebound. He's a great rebounding guard. Tom Izzo served on the Judd Heap code. We learned so much from Judd, a brilliant tactician. We're going to turnovers. Both even, though, balance it out there. A lot of turnovers because of the physical defensive intensity. Kentucky again can make it a two-point game. I mentioned Judd Heathcote, I think, of 79 when they won that national title. Vincent, Frank Kelser, and a guy by the name of Mack. Oh, 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 a hook shot! A hook shot! He looked like Brad Doherty! He looked like Sam Bowie shooting the hook shot! Hey, Doherty, you teaching that hook? Thomas walked with it. Hey, 752. Dick, Dick, what did I tell you about Jamal McGlure? He's playing well right now, and it's a two-point game. If you've seen any good vampire movies lately, but you will if you've tuned into this game tonight. This is Tom oh. Izzo with Charlie Bell oh. going to the break. He's making like a Tyson. He's making like Tyson. Is he biting his ear? Oh, he's is he in his ear? definitely in his ear, I'll tell you that much. Oh, he's in his ear talking a little Italian. He said, Charlie, I want to get you a beautiful Christmas gift. Uh -huh. Just get me a W. Like you're going to be running lines when this one's over if you don't play better. Jamal McGlure, though, his eighth career double-double has certainly helped. That strong hook shot. The last trip down court for Kentucky erupted the crowd, made it a two-point game again. I'll tell you one thing, if he would have finished a little bit more inside, he'd have about 25 right now. Nice little hook shot. I like that hook shot. He broke the shot blocking record here. Broke Melvin Turpin's yep. record for block shots. Kentucky looking to tie. Swing the ball side to side. Get some touches inside. Inside, outside basketball. Trying to get it into McGlure. They do. He faces the basket. Turns. And missed it. But it's kept alive. Nice job by Prince for the lead. It's one -on. The first lead since two to nothing is now Kentucky's 50-49. Foul on Allison. 
crowd is into it. One of the great environments in basketball. Some of my favorites are down here. Rock Short, Jayhawk, certainly in Kansas. Bloomington when the general walks out. You got to love that place. You got to love the museum in North Carolina, Chapel Hill. Right here is special. And, of course, the Cameron Crazies. Blevins has hit three shots tonight. They've all been three. Yes, sir. Blevins knocking it down. They were hoping that Blevins, your attacker, would step up and give him a three-point threat. That foul, by the way, was the fourth on Allison. Here's Saul Smith. He's got Bogans out in front. He nice got it. Nice tip. Oh, the follow by Prince. Follow by Prince. Yes, sir. He, got a, he might get a T.O. right here, Tommy Izzo. This house is rocking. Kentucky by three. Oh, the Cats are playing defense. Number five team in the country in trouble on the road. Richardson to try to tie it. Missed it. Got it back, though. That was Brick City, USA. Now it's Charlie Bell. Rebound. Who's going to get it? Hudson. Granger. Boy, Michigan State finally got a follow from Richardson. I'll tell you, Richardson really can find the glass. You know, if they win this game, you're going to hear people talk upset, upset. How would you like to believe that Kentucky here is probably the favorite? You play at home, like you said, with a 90%, you're Kentucky. I mean, you come on a road here, you got to scrap and go out and get a double. You're not kidding. I don't care how good you are. 52-51. Saul Smith down open. And didn't get oh, the roll. He didn't get the roll. But they got it back. Bogans kicks back out. Saul's going to try it again. And on the rebound, a foul. I believe it's going to be on either McGlore or Tayshawn Prince. I think it was McGlore. I'll tell you one thing about the Michigan State kids. They really climbed the glass and attacked the basket. The second in the country in rebounding margin, or they were over the weekend. Well, you can see why. As you see the way they go after the basket. Both these teams are outstanding rebounding teams. Slight edge by Michigan State. And they threw it away. Granger had Bell going one way, the pass going the other. It's been a war for these Michigan State kids with the schedule they have played. Road games to Arizona. Kansas on a neutral floor. Road game with North Carolina. Road game with Kentucky. Kentucky with the lead by one with five and a half to go. Well, if you missed any of our profiles of the 50 greatest athletes of the century, tune into ESPN2 on December 31st or ESPN Classic on January 1st. For back-to-back -back marathons, ESPN.com, part of the Go Network, Go.com. You know, talking about lists and talking about records, most people would say immediately, say the program of the century, UCLA, 11 national championships, only seven for Kentucky. But let me tell you this, NCAA trips, 40 for Kentucky, 34 for UCLA. NCAA tournament games won, Kentucky 84, UCLA 74. You go on NCAA Final Fours, 13 Kentucky, 14 UCLA. 73% of the games they've won. They've won 1,753 games. That's to 1455. Tops. My choice because of their fans. I also add the fans into the equation. There's much more fan excitement here than a Pauley Pavilion. My edge, the team of the century, the Kentucky Wildcats. Boy, you're going to have an easy way of getting back to your room tonight and out of town tomorrow. <laughs> you pick somebody else, I'm going to ask for security. I'm glad I'm not going to UCLA tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, really, UCLA is a great place as well, but they don't have the kind of environment they have here. It's such a passion. Bogan's on a drive. Got it. Keep Bogan. That's what he can do and do well. He's a strong guard. 6-5. He can take the basket, break you down one-on-one -on -one from out of the Matha High School. Again, Kentucky by three. We're under five minutes. Charlie Bell has a problem that he picks up his dribble too much. Charlie Bell has not scored in the second half and missed much of the first half with foul trouble. Well, he's really taking his point guard responsibility like I got a pass, pass, pass like he did right there. He got a nice pass to Richardson, but Prince says, I'm going to make you earn it from the free throw line. Somebody's got the jacket off. He is coaching. Tayshawn Prince picks up his third foul. And he's going to make Richardson earn it from the free throw line. And Richardson has really struggled this year. He's 5 of 14 from the line. That's 36%. Wow. So they may be setting a good guy to the free throw line here. See, I think Charles Bell can also attack the basket with his dribbling. 
ability, not even close, and really try to score as well. He's trying to get everybody involved, and he's taken away his scoring ability. And remember, the last three games, he scored 20 or more points. Now, Jason's got to work in this area of his game because he's a slasher and an offensive rebounder. He's going to get fouled a lot. That's the most. Really hurts when you come down the stretch. You're on a road. You're in the last five minutes. You're in the winning time. You got to convert those free throws. Blevins, who's played so well off the Kentucky bench, is one of the points. And he and Saul Smith sharing it now. In fact, execution, shot selection, so important. The right guys have to shoot the ball. Prince with a hook shot. Didn't get the roll. Richardson, tough rebound. Well, he's the right guy. At least he's the number one option. You go to your key guy. Spin pass inside, and Hudson fades away. The follow is missed by Richardson. And he was above the rim. I mean, this kid is a high wire act. Blevins will slow it down. See, right now, I would have liked to see Peterson get some touches down here. Manage the clock, shot selection, play good basketball, using your IQ on that floor. Why not McGlure again as an option? Yes, sir. Slide him inside and double the ball. Saul Smith, the drive and the scoop shot, and the blocking foul on Richards. That's a big play right there, Saul. Intelligent play because he's an excellent free throw shooter. Ducky by three. This would be a big momentum builder if they were to win this game. I was talking to Jerry Tipton, the writer from the Lexington Herald here at halftime. And we were talking about the momentum. 88% shooter on a free throw line. One for two tonight. There's a lot of enthusiasm and passion this kid. Got the roll. That one looks a little tired. He'll get a little more bend in his knees probably on the second one. But he's given his team a four-point lead. Remember, they were 15 down, people. They were down 25 to 11. And as Chris Fowler said in the studio, reverse of last year in the NCAA tournament, when in that game, they were down 17-4 Michigan State. Had to come back and win that game. Saul had to coax both of them in, but he did. And he's given his team a five-point lead. Tayshawn Prince in Kentucky coming back and leading fifth-ranked Michigan State. ESPN's exclusive presentation of NCAA Basketball is brought to you by Chrysler, giving you back the romance of driving, and by Warner Brothers' new motion picture any given Sunday at theaters everywhere starting Wednesday, December 22nd. What an unbelievable turnaround from earlier in this game. Kentucky now leading 56-51 to 51 with 3.40 left. And if you need more... College basketball action, we can bring it to your home. Over 450 college basketball games on pay-per-view. See the top teams and conferences no matter where you live. Call your cable operator, DirecTV at 1-800-DIRECTV or DISH Network at 1-800-333-DISH. Stanford Cardinal on top after Arizona has lost now to New Mexico the other day. UConn, Cincinnati, and this Michigan State team, the ESPN USA Today top five. You know, we... We talk about undefeated teams coming up next. We've got Louisville and North Carolina. Yesterday, North Carolina State went down to its first loss to Tulane. Vanderbilt lost their first game. Saul Smith with a steal on a break. And he lost it going up. Charlie Bell knocked it away. Charlie Bell with a good defensive play, good defensive transition. Hey, you know, you talk about this conference, undefeated LSU. That's right. Well, Miles Swift, a lot of people tell me, maybe one of the top five players in America. Nobody ever talks about the kid. 6'9", having a big-time year. they got a big date with Oklahoma State on the same doubleheader when Kentucky plays Missouri on the 30th. Tennessee has lost, we understand. So wow, to Tulsa, doesn't surprise me. They're undefeated. String goes by the boards. Tulsa's really good. Watch him at critical time. Spread the court now, get good spacing. 15 on the shot clock as we approach three minutes. Hogan's a clear out the right-hand side of the court for him. He's going to have to do something with it. Gets double teamed and feeds McGlore. Oh, you got to finish that. you got to finish that play, Brad. you got to go up strong. He was tiptoeing. Tiptoeing through the tour. <laughs> I mean, you got to take that baby and jam that sucker well, at 6'10". He, he wasn't playing against Tiny Tim, though. Granger is 6'9". I mean, take a look right here. He's going to slide down the lane, goes down the gut of the defense, 
And now look at this guy, freeze it. He was a little tiptoeing. You gotta get above that rim. I mean, you get over the telephone book right there. But the war, 16 points, now 17. He hasn't missed a free throw in the last seven. Missed his first two. Hey, Brad, don't you think he's got to finish that play? you got to go up strong at 6'10 and a half and jam that. Yeah, anytime you step into the lane, you have to be prepared. Bogans did a great job breaking his man down. Made a tremendous pass, and McGraw just wasn't quite ready. you got to be ready in that lane at all times. Well, he converted the two free throws, and that was big. It's a seven-point Kentucky lead. Peterson, air ball on a three. Outlet to Bogans. He lost the handle, and... Flies into the crowd, so we'll go right back to Michigan State. Yeah, really out of control right there. You got a seven-point lead. You're under three minutes. You got to understand game clock. You got to understand the time, the score, all those little situations. That's the difference of winning and losing. 2:35 to play. Biggest possession of the game for Michigan State. They must convert here, or I think it's lights out. Wake up the bus driver and get that bus started. They got a score here. Charlie Bell. Finger roll inside. And Charlie yes. Bell goes inside and makes the big play, and that's why he's a star. His first basket of the second half, and it certainly came, as Dick said, at a great time for Michigan State. And out of the defensive stop, I think Charlie got too unselfish here in the second half. He never got back in the flow after the foul trouble. Right? That's a good call, Brad. Eleven. He's played as good a game as anybody on the floor. Yes. Yeah, he really has, and he's also getting a lot of minutes. The coach has recognized that. Paul Smith kicks it outside to Prince on the baseline at Rinda. Ooh, that would have been a killer. Had that gone down, that would have been a killer. Charlie Bell bringing it up. Got him, Ron Bogans. He's going to attack the basketball. Oh, oh what a block shot. Tayshaun Prince sent it to the scorer's table. And I thought that was a good block. I know they figured a goaltender, but I thought it was a good block. Paul Smith got kicked in the hip, I think, scrambling for that loose ball. He's not going out. I can guarantee you that. Michigan State will inbound. Brother GG, former Georgia player. Now take a look at the block. The rotation in the defense. He didn't come over. I think he gets the ball going up. He can shoot it. He ripped it. Granger with a huge three-pointer. Will somebody tell him he should shoot more? Somebody better tell Granger he's got to look at the basket more. I mean, he was big for them during the NCAA tournament. Remember, when Granger scores in double figures, they don't lose. He's got 10, but Kentucky's still got a two-point lead. All right, fellas, when you're done, we'll head just up the road to Louisville, where big old Brendan Haywood and the Tar Heels are set to battle. Tony Williams, Nate Johnson, and the Cardinals in a matter of minutes. Brad? All right, Chris. Two-point game with 127. We never expected we'd be saying that when at one point it was 26 to 11 in the second half, then a 16 to 2 run to end the half by Kentucky. Michigan State came out in the second half, got on fire again. Kentucky wouldn't go away. I tell you, Tayshawn Prince made some big shots, and he also did a better job distributing the basketball. And McGlure is big inside, and that's why they're plus two. Hey, it's great to have Chris Fala back in a basketball mode. Got him out of that football mentality. He's still got to get back into some of that football mentality. There's a whole bunch to come. Yeah, you're right. Bowl time. I'll be sitting home watching it all. Michigan State might need some three-point shooting before it's over. Right now, they don't have to worry about that. They're looking for a stop defensively. And a push on Granger. Very obvious foul right there. Well, on Granger. Yeah, have done a pretty good job here. Mr. Good. Clark, Sanzier, and Mr. Burr. 109 now. Remaining in regulation. Tayshaun Prince is a 68% free throw shooter. Two for two tonight. Now he should be better. He's got to be in the middle 70s. He's got too good a touch to be at 68%. Yes, that was pretty good touch. Speaking of Chris Fowler, he and Kirk and Lee will preview the upcoming bowl games. 1999 Circuit City Bowl kickoff show. That is tomorrow at 7.30 on ESPN. Prince got them both. Yeah, good job by Tayshaun Prince. Good focus right there on the free throw line. Converts those two big ones. Tonight's another example. If you play on a defensive end, you could scrap and floor yourself back into a game. I mean, Kentucky shot 8 for 23 at halftime. They played poorly offensively. They were 15 down. Yet here they are right now, up four because of their defense. 
Dick, we got 109 left and do that promo for me, will you? Well, you got Penn State coming up against Texas A&M Tuesday night. Should be a big one. Joe Paterno leads the Nittany Lions for their 30th bowl appearance on Tuesday, the 28th at 7.30 from the Alamo Dome, baby, in San Antonio. All right. Thank you, sir. <laughs> oh. I got to help my buddy out here. I mean, he's uh, got to rest that throat. He's got to get ready for football. Well, we got 69 seconds left in this one. You might have more. <laughs> might have more. There's the foul situation. Each team with two timeouts. Possession arrow to Kentucky. Charlie Bell. Bring it up against Saul Smith, and we have one minute left. Psychologically, this would be such a big win for Kentucky. It would give them big-time momentum. Uh-oh, Granger's open. He missed it. Bell didn't miss it. Charles Bell with the big play. Good look, good execution, getting Granger the open look. And then again, offensive rebounding, a key for Michigan State all year. Comes up big for them to get that deuce. Don't forget Louisville and seventh-ranked North Carolina following us. And we've got just under 50 seconds left in regulation. Ah, it's so great seeing these marquee matchups instead of all those cupcake blowouts. We get some teams. I think it's hurt UCLA. They get beat yesterday by Colorado State. They go out of Holy Pavilion for the first time. And I think that hurts you. It's like I said earlier, Syracuse, my buddy Jimmy B, has not left. Has not left the carrier dome. You know he's got his Christmas shopping. Oh, though. wow. Yeah, he's had it all year long. A little cupcake here, a little cupcake there, W there. But the team is legitimate. Syracuse is legitimate this year. And I love the carrier dome. I haven't been here in a while. I'll be there for the Connecticut game, and that is a special place as well. Yep. So 49.6 remaining. Kentucky by two. And Michigan State with full court pressure now. Another great place is Campbell Pavilion. I wish Connecticut would play all their games there. That's like a Duke Cameron Lindor Stadium. A great environment. Clear out everybody and let Saul Smith bring it up against Charlie Bell. Yeah, they're going to put the in his hands. And remember, he's an excellent free throw shooter because this is going to come down to making free throws. But Laura's actually shot free throws extremely well tonight as well. Difference in the game. Game clock, shot clock, about 14 second difference. Ashaw Prince dribbling against Granger. Here he goes on the drive, kicks it outside. Now it's Bogans for an open look. The rebound is Michigan State's. I don't think they wanted Bogans to shoot that jump shot. Let's see if they're going to call a timeout. They'll get a timeout yes. now. They'll get a timeout. With 9.4 seconds left. Now you got to remember this, Brad. So many times I've seen situations like this where it's not the shot taken that becomes big. It's the offensive rebound. The offensive rebound, and remember, they're an excellent rebounded team. So Kentucky must block out on a shot. Strategy. You think there's a little tension, a little nervousness now in that gut of these coaches? Believe me, I sat there and I can tell you, that stomach is churning like you cannot believe. 60-58. So it's down to one shot to tie and send it to overtime on a win for Michigan State. And Kentucky, 9.4 away from maybe their most important win, at least of 99, with the year turning soon they've got a couple more games before january but none to, before christmas somebody's going to get a great christmas present here happy holidays to all the beautiful people out there as well from brown and i as we now get into this game defense becomes big you got to watch a guy like Chappelle who can shoot the three as well and now kentucky has a look and they take a timeout i got to think of options on a court Chappelle and granger are your three-point shooters though you're not thinking exclusively three here. right you're thinking of getting the high percentage shot, but if a Chappelle and Granger in the offensive set is in a position to shoot the three, you shoot it. You know, speaking of threes, way back in the first half, we talked about Kentucky hitting a three for their 382nd straight game, and I said we had a trivia question for everybody. We'd answer it in a few seconds. I forgot all about it until just now. Only three programs in college basketball have hit a three-pointer every game since that rule was instituted. UNLV, Vanderbilt, at Princeton. Wow, I've learned something right now. So I hope everybody yes, stuck, around, wow. stuck around in the last 9.4 seconds for that. Vanderbilt could have used a few of those threes yesterday. Yeah, that's right. They've done a heck of a job. They were undefeated until yesterday. Here's your game. A yes, sir, right here, baby. Watch the offensive rebound on a missed shot. Peterson's got it in hand. They're going to spread the court. Chappelle looking for an opening. Clock going down. Four seconds. Granger dishes underneath. 
Oh, it's over, it's over, it's over. Kentucky wins it. What a win. A great W for Kentucky. Oh, this is a big, big W, baby. It's a happy group in Rupp Arena. Kentucky yeah. comes back from 15 points down, and they win a thriller at Rupp Arena. I'll tell you, Brad, beating Louisville and beating Michigan State back-to-back -back could give this club big-time momentum. The Cats might be back. Yes, sirree. I believe they're going to make a big-time run in the SEC. Final score, Kentucky 60, Michigan State 58. Donna says we won. She's right. They won it. Kentucky wins. Michigan State falls for only the third time. For Brad Doherty and Dick Vitale and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Brad Nessler saying so long and happy holidays from Rupp Arena as we send it to Chris Fowler. Chris.